Hello everyone, I'm Don L. McAdams, an accredited teacher with So Steady and Westerly Templates. And today I'm going to show you how to do cross hatching. So I have prepared two spaces here that we're going to work in. And so what I've done is I've drawn the space in here, and this is the margin. So whenever I go to do any projects and I need to pre-quilt my fabric, I always add some extra for a margin. So this is a project that I have quilted, and this is a bag. It's the Easy Does It Bag by, by Annie. And you can see those pieces have been quilted. And so I cut the pieces out and I gave myself a half inch all the way around. So basically you're going to add an inch to the width and an inch, inch to the length so that you will have plenty of space. So the first one that we're going to cross hatch, we are going to do it so this direction would be at a 90 degree angle. So I'm going to take my eight point crosshair ruler and I am going to use that because it makes it so easy. Now I like to start with an exact center. On this, I can pretty much see that I've got the center there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go like this to give myself an, an, a direct center there so that I can come down here and have this cross that bottom line. So at this point, I'm gonna take the two that go across, I'm gonna use the middle point there, and I am going to mark it this way and this way. And those are really the only two lines that I'm going to be using. So I'm gonna draw this line, and I'm gonna turn it this way, and draw this nine. Now this is my um, centering ruler and what I'm going to be using with this is the first time because I like to keep things so they're nice and on the center so I am going to stitch right on that line. So I'm going to start over here get it so that you can see and I'm going to start out here in my margin. I'm going to go ahead and bring my thread up like I normally would. Although it's not going to be any big deal because I'm not going to have to bury it. It's out in my margin. Now the other reason that we want a margin there and we want to work clear out to that outer edge is because this might shrink in a little bit or pull in due to our quilting. And the more heavily quilted it is, the more it's going to pull in. I'm actually going to do this so I have a one inch spacing. So it's not going to pull in as much as if I had like a half inch spacing. So now that I've got that set, I'm going to put my needle back down. I'm going to get my spacing gauge. I did put stable tape on the back of my ruler. And I'm going to measure right here for my quarter of an inch. So I'm just going to do my ruler work right down to that point in this case. I don't need to go out into the margin. I wouldn't need to turn it, but since I can, I'm going to because then you can see what I'm doing. And I'm going to measure and I'm going to come out here. Now again, I'm sewing clear out into the margin, and then I like to use my ruler. I seem to be better with it when I just use my ruler to move down to the next spot. Now I said it's an inch. It might be, it might not be. We'll know soon because what I want to do is have it so it's guiding on that center line because this ruler is two inches wide. If I wanted it three-fourths of an inch, I would guide on, well, excuse me, if I wanted an inch, i guide on the three-fourths of an inch. So that's where I want to put it right now because three-fourths plus the quarter inch in my foot is going to give me that inch. So I'm just going to stitch back up to that spot and now we're going to go this direction. 
while I'm out here in the margin, I'm going to move down in that margin, line up with that three quarters of an inch. Boy, I guessed good that time. Again, I like to use my ruler. And you'll get on to that. If not, you can see I've got a little space. So all I'm going to do before I start is push this back towards there and then stitch this direction. Now, right there's the end of mine. It's kind of wiped itself away. Let's get it so you can see it. There's no more to stitch here. We can't stitch anything else there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down this way. You've got lots of ways you can go about it. But I'm going to then take off on this one at three quarters of an inch. And that's why I love this ruler is because I can easily do longer pieces. Looks like my thread broke there. Whenever you're re-threading, make sure you raise your foot because that's the only way that you are going to get the thread seated in that tension disc. So make sure you raise that foot. My machine has an automatic threader. If I push the right buttons, it works very easily. So I'm gonna press that down there. Not sure what happened on that first time. Oh, I don't have my needle bar up high enough. My machine's telling me what I did wrong. There we go. In this case, fourth time's a charm. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lower my um, there we go. Sorry about that, but those things happen. Thank goodness I was close here. So what would I do if this is the situation? Well, I have to be honest with you because I want you to learn the way it's easiest to work with it. I'm not going to try and meet that up unless, unless it's on a very busy fabric. If it's truly a busy fabric and you're not going to see it, I'm just going to line it up, stitch a few stitches back, and go on. If it was on this fabric, I would take that out back to here and then start again. But since this is one that we are just showing a technique, I'll show you the way I would do it if it was on a busy fabric and you couldn't see it. So I would need to bring that thread up because we sure don't want it making a mess underneath there. So we've got our thread up. I'm going to put that needle back down. And that one didn't go in exactly in the line. So I'm just going to bring that needle back up and get it in there. Pull this in. Later I would need to bury these threads. So I'm just going to go back like one stitch. And then I'm going to go forward. Now this right here is part of that row, which I would be able to cut. It's just a few stitches there. This I would bury the thread. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this thread because I can just take my tweezers and get that out of there. It's always nice to see someone doing it when there's a mistake because then you know what you're going to need to do. So at this point, I would take these threads because we're going to be moving around this fabric a lot. I don't want to have these threads all still here. And you can see that there's a little distance between there. That's what I want. And if you've never tied your threads like this, there is another video that will teach you how to do that. And so once I've gotten that through there, you can see it really is very difficult to tell that that thread was joined in there. All right, so now that we're here, 
we're gonna come down. And you're probably wondering, why don't I just measure that an inch? Because an inch in that direction is not an inch in this direction. It's close, but it's certainly not exact. So I'm gonna come over to my ruler again, come down, go across. And you can see that time I went too far, so I'm gonna come back. And if I've done it the way I intended to, you can see my little square here, or my little corner, is about the same size as that one. And that's the way it should be. So now, let's go ahead and go up. So we can start coming down this way. And the thing that I think is great about cross hatching is it can give you some experience in sewing in different directions. We're out in the margin here. I could have stopped right there and gone back that way. So that's what I'm gonna do is go back here and then we'll come down this way. Need to go that way, just a few stitches. I once made the mistake of not leaving myself a margin to work in that was awful because I had to quilt clear out to the very edge. It wasn't even on a drawn piece. It was a cut piece. And I had all of these threads all over the place simply because I forgot to add the margin. Hindsight, I would have probably gone back and just recut the whole thing because it would have been a lot easier than what I had to deal with. I had to stitch off of the edge, go ahead and cut it, and then, of course, every single time, bring up my thread to start. Now, as you can see, I'm not going off, I'm not going to make it with this ruler. So what you want to do is stop before you get to that and move your ruler forward so that when you get down there, you're not stitching off of your ruler. Go a little bit farther. So you can see the cross hatching developing and all we had to do because we've got our ruler to work with is mark the center line first and then I used my eight point crosshair square. So we're going to go this way a little bit in that margin. Line it up again. These rulers are available on my website at sewbizmarion.com. And that's S-E-W-B-I-Z-M-A-R-I-O-N.com. And they're called the Centering Ruler. And it's just nice to have one that you can see through to line up and also one that's longer. Now I'm not going to complete this because I think you've got the idea of it, but I'm going to do enough so you start to see so right now, I'm going to go this way, but I'm going to turn around and come back down this way. Got a little bit more to go. Line this up.
And when you overshoot, just go back to your ruler in the margin. You can see that little spot right there. So this is gonna give you your cross hatching. Obviously it's not completed, but you can see how that works to get that 90 degree. Now what I wanna show you is how you can do it so that you can get like a diamond when you're doing this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over to this one. We're going to use that right here again, kind of just space it in the middle. Looks like that's about exactly eight and a half there. We need the center to start, okay? Now, I can take this down right here but instead of using this to line up, I'm going to use the line that's between that. So I'm putting this right here at the bottom on my line that goes across, and I'm putting the etch line between this. So we're going to put a line this way and a line that way. Now, you have to pay attention to the way you're doing this, or you'll get elongated diamonds on their side. You can see visually that this is going to be the, the diamonds that are vertical. And that's what we want in this case. Okay, so it's pretty much the same thing. I'm going to start up here. Out in that margin. Pull up that thread. Line this up. Guess I've got it a little bit off there. There we go. Line up our quarter of an inch. Looks like I've splayed out a little bit there. And that'll happen because that you're off your table at that point. When I was lining that up, it was kind of off the table. So I need to go like one more stitch or two here. Line this up. in that margin so I'm going to come over get our quarter of an inch or excuse me our three quarters of an inch which will mean it's an inch because of the extra from the edge of the foot to the needle Like I said, this will give you good practice in stitching in different directions, holding your fabric and your ruler. Only got it about a half inch, a little bit more. And you might want to take some ruler stickers and put on your ruler to help you with that. Let's see, let's go back up this way. I can't see back behind there, so I'm going to go ahead and turn that.
And you can see our diamonds down here starting to develop. Doing something like this does give you a good experience in working with your rulers in multiple directions. So I think that's probably enough so that you can see how I now have these elongated diamonds. I probably wouldn't want them going this way. You might have a project that you'd want that way, but usually it's going to be so that they're taller. And then of course we've got the squares over on this side. So again, the way I did this one was to put the straight line in take the center of my eight point and put that there so that this lined along the bottom of my area that I was going to work with. And then I drew these two lines and worked with that. For the diamonds, I had my center line. I put my little center here in place, but before I drew, I rotated it so that the line between those two was on my center line and then I drew these two here. So that's how I do those two methods of cross hatching. There obviously are other angles that you can do. These are the two most popular. So I wanted to share that with you today. So that's part of the How Do I series and this one is cross stitching. I'm Donnell McAdams and thank you for joining me today.